Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Beautiful day here in Maine. Um, today is a new uh, article, Live Viscatsi. I know it's difficult, at least for me, to, to pronounce. And, and I heard about him before my stroke um, in the educational world because of something he had written about called the uh, Zone of Proximal Development, uh, ZPD. Um, and I had read about that before. It's in the educational world when it comes to scaffolding. When you hear about that in the educational world, you go, oh, okay, that's what it is. And the ZPD of, uh, of Len uh, Ligatsky um, is what he was really talking about. Um, so, as I read about him before um, and understood a lot more about both what he was describing and, and scaffolding, scaffolding, scalloping, sorry, um, was doing, um, that was all good. And then I had my stroke and didn't think much about him for quite a while. Um, but as I got better and as I was able to learn more about um, how the brain works when it came to stroke and aphasia. Um, one thing that sort of tipped me off was another uh, set of information, a book he had written about, um, talking about the internalization of higher uh, psychological functions, basically mental functions, and the internalization of that. And um, this now this is after my stroke, and I, I had been keeping track, of course, with my writing and my recording um, uh, for the couple of years after my stroke and had seen uh, various um, metaphors of what it was that I was doing that was eventually would get me better. And one of them was that uh, the, what are called the automatics, you know, the ABCs, the one, two, three, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, January, February, March, um, those are the automatics that the therapist will talk with you about uh, um, because for us, it's difficult to find, um, today's a Tuesday, so it's difficult to find Tuesday without starting at the be beginning of that train of thought. So in the, especially at the beginning when it was a Thursday or whatever, I would go and I couldn't come up with that word. I knew exactly what it was, but I couldn't get to that word. And you'll see lots of my work talking about automatics and the, the issue that it is with people with stroke and aphasia who cannot find their way in a train of, of thought, they have to actually start at the beginning. So I would say to myself out loud, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, ah. Um, and the more I did that, I thought, okay, well, I'll go faster, right? Why not go faster? Because I know where it is. It's over there. If it's a Friday, it's way over there. And if today's a Tuesday, but I would start by saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, emphasizing on Friday. That is the day I wanted to say. Um, but I would do it faster and faster. And as I went faster, then I would realize, oh, I don't have to say the whole thing because I would say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I started whispering. I said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, and then I go. And I didn't have to do the whole world. It was just Monday, Tuesday, Friday, um, and and. As I got better, then when people would ask me what day is tomorrow, what are we going to do tomorrow or next week, in the on the inside, I didn't have to say it out loud to myself, which I had been doing out loud actually to other people. Um, I could go quickly, mentally, very, very quickly, uh, because now we're moving not at the speed of light, but darn close, um, and not really, uh, but moving much faster than me actually having to pronounce. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so as that happened, and now people ask me things, and I would still be thinking my way through, right? And then come to Friday, as it were. Um, but as it got, quote, faster and faster, I began to see this internalization before I really knew that that was the word, um, that the internalization of what I had before had broken various of links in terms of the lost cells, um, dendrites, synapses, uh, disorganizing the uh, neuro um, networks and groups, 
But I didn't know any of that at the time. All I knew was that as I got better, I got better by saying it out loud, then saying it faster, then whispering, then bringing it inside and not even having to do the whole word, but going Friday. Um, and then obviously uh, becomes more back to where it used to be in terms of, and now I understand it to be the internalization of what are otherwise outside activities, whatever they might be, including with your, your body, um, the internalization of those activities. So if you want to do something better in baseball and tennis and any number of sports or, or music or anything, it takes a lot of work on the outside to build up the network and the habits that come as a result of that before it becomes completely automatic and it becomes internalized. So again, um, uh, after my stroke, finding out, of course, about Lev, finding out that he actually did also talk about aphasia, which I obviously had, and then finding this, this uh, um, book um, and chapters about not only the uh, zone of proximal development, but also the internalization of higher mental um, activities and how we, quote, bring that into ourselves, into our body, into our, our brain. Um, so he was quite a guy. And you might have seen, he, unfortunately, he died quite young. Um, he got sick with tuberculosis early in life, in his 20s. Um, and for the rest of his life, he was quite ill, um, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, but quite ill and often couldn't even write. Uh, he would just um, uh, talk out loud and have somebody else record it and then have them um, transcribe it for us to see later. But of course, at that point, they transcribed it into Russian. And then it had to be translated to English um, in the 60s and 70s. And with Lev, this was all in the 20s and 30s, 1920s and 30s. Um, and he died in 34. Uh, but by then, um, he had met uh, Loria, who you saw last week. And uh, literally, they became quite a pair, uh, started actually uh, what they ended up calling a, a, um, a group together between uh, Loria and uh, Loria and uh, Scotsy um, into a into a, um, a group of other scientists and continue with that. And sadly, once Lev passed, Loria basically took off, uh, took over with everything that Lev had done and then much, much more with um, Loria in terms of uh, brain activities, uh, lesions, uh, aphasia uh, going forward. But it is amazing what he had done in such a short period of time um, going forward. Um, and the uh, some of what he said, and I get to this, I'll go to the uh, internalization component of it, and I'll read this out loud, that he had stated that development, as often happens, proceeds here not in a circle, but in a spiral, passing through the same point at each new revolution while advancing to a higher level we call the internal reconstruction of an external operation internalization. And me, um, not having those words for me, but feeling that that was what was happening as I said it, said it faster and faster and bringing it inside, um, that was the internalization of anything that we are, are working on. So that was quite interesting. Um, the... Um, and it's also interesting that another person, uh, Dewey, John Dewey, an educator, um, you'll see that an article about him next month. And with Dewey, um, and Dewey lived a long, li long life. Uh, uh, Lev was born in 1896. Dewey was born, believe it or not, in 1859, 59 and didn't die until 1952. I was already alive by then. So almost a hundred years. And with Dewey, he too had learned a lot about other scientists who were, who were um, uh, psychologist people, uh, all those kinds of people like Luria, um, Scotsy, um, William James, um, 
But as an educator, he started to adopt some of that information, some of that language from those other scientists. And at one point, and I used Dewey in this article, because as it says here, um, that, uh, that with Dewey, who actually, uh, Lingotz, uh, Nick Scotzi had mentioned uh, Dewey in that particular article, that particular book. Um, and then Dewey talked, uh, touched on it in another book called Experience in Education. That, and then here's the quote, that the problem grows out of the conditions of the experience being had in the present. And that is within the range of the capacity of students. And the process is a continuous spiral. And that's from, from Dewey. Um, the, um, and then when it comes to the zone of proximal development, um, another good, good, good uh, quote from him was that the actual transition from the internalization and moving past uh, uh, this, these circles, this spiral of, of, of uh, with doing activities, but needing help to understand what the problem is that needs to be solved. And as that becomes less of a problem to be solved, as much as a habit to now know going forward, um, and it moves through that, that, uh, that spiral, uh, Agassi mentions, stated, what a child can do with, ex with the assistance today, she will be able to do by herself tomorrow. So again, that is not only the zone where you pass through that zone of what you didn't know, what you already know, there's this zone in between the proximal development and the internalization. Also part of that is how it moves from the outside. You need lots of quote, help, assistance. Uh, if you're in school, obviously homework and getting other tutors uh, to help you with. Um, and then internalize that into um, a new set of habits, a new set of pathways um, that are now firm. And now we all now know what those things are when we want to go look for that. We don't have to think our way through. The, they are just there for us. So again, quite a guy um, when it came to uh, his, his uh, 37 37 years working his way through this in Moscow and in Russia. And then of course it was transcribed uh, in the 60s and 70s. Um, and of course they did work together before he passed. And there's a great article too about the two of them as the authors. And you'll get to see that in the, in the uh, article as well. And I'm still reading about it. So I wish I could put it into the article, but I can't, but boy, have they got some tremendous um, learning as a result of, of working together to really continue to describe how the brain worked long before they had the uh, uh, technology that we now have now. So that is where we are today. Lev Viscazzi. Thank you very much. Nice to see everyone. And I will see you in a couple weeks for the next edition. Um, we are getting close to the end of the year. The series will be 24 series, and I think we're at 16, 17. So we are getting close, and we will continue to do a lot next year, but it just won't be this series that way, although you'll see a lot of other new scientists that you will hear based on who each of these 24 that you have seen, then you find out, oh, uh, like somebody else had said, standing on the shoulders of a tremendous amount of people who provided that kind of information that now the more famous people know more about because we've heard about it, but there are some others that are right below uh, on whose shoulders they've been standing and they are just as smart as anyone else. Um, it's really quite amazing to read about some of them and that will be coming next year. All right, have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.